Good morning. morning. Welcome. It's good to see you this morning as we gather um, on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Mike, and it's good to be together, worship as this community of St. James. A couple of announcements I'd like to lift up. One, um, an invitation to our summer choir. Our summer choir is here, but the summer choir practices on a Sunday morning at 1020. And so it's not like you have to be coming to other rehearsals. You can come on a Sunday morning and sing. So I know there's always room for more in the summer choir. So that would be great to have some of you move from your seats over to those seats. That would be terrific. (coughs) Following our worship this morning, we will Um, have our farewell uh, picnic gathering for our youth minister, Jess, who prepares to to leave and go out and join her husband in Indiana. Um, We have moved the picnic inside to our dining room, so we will um, be downstairs immediately following our worship service. So I hope we can be together and just celebrate Jess's years here and to wish her farewell. And then the one other announcement um, has to do with God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, which is the ELCA initiative um, each year to do a work day. That work day is September 8th this year. And so the sign up and all that is is going to be finalized, but the thing I want to, I want to lift up this morning is that we are getting um, offering to get um, shirts, the, the orange shirts, many of you I suspect have them, but orange shirts that have uh, the St. James on the back and has the God's Work Our Hand logo on. So if you would like to sign up for a shirt, The sign-up sheet is there in the gathering area. Um, And it's only, we need to order them by August 11th. So that's that's part of the key. So by August 11th, so that time period is much shorter. So please, if you would like a shirt with St. James, with God's Work Our Hands, please um, sign up size and all that. But we need to know that by... August 11th. Okay, I would invite you to stand as you're able that we might pray together the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. reading from Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, 
so as to pre present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope, the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to the saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. May be seated. While we're still very new to the whole married life and living together thing, Christina has already begun to identify some of my, let's just call them, quirks. <laughs> she might choose to call them something a little bit stronger, but for the purposes of the sermon, and since I'm the one delivering it, we'll stick with quirks. As such things go, as Christina has become more aware of said quirks, so too have I become aware <laughs> of said quirks. Those of you who are married or who have been or who have ever found yourselves in a significant relationship can certainly relate. Those things that have been brought to my attention are things such as forgetting to close the cupboard doors in the kitchen after getting a cup or a plate or a bag of Grandma Oot's potato chips, most likely the latter, doing the same with the dresser drawers in the bedroom after getting a t-shirt or a pair of shorts, failing to put away the ironing board and the iron after getting ready for work in the morning, leaving my shoes just outside of the closet instead of putting them in the closet on the shoe rack where they belong, and keeping things for no real good reason, 
other than I never know when or at what point I'll need them. Some would call this hoarding. I call it good stewardship. (laughs) At our evening service last night, one of our regular attenders for Saturday evening worship shared that it was putting toilet paper on the dispenser in the right way. Yeah? While Christina could no doubt add plenty more to the list, it's safe to say that the quirk that gets to her the most is how I get when I'm trying to accomplish a task. Regardless of if it's doing yard work, putting something together for one of the kids, cleaning the house, or working on a sermon during a nine-hour car ride following vacation in New England with a four- and a five-year-old in the back seat, I can't see, hear, or deal with anything else until I've completed the task that I'm doing. And if you're not helping, you're not helping. Did I get that right, honey? (laughs) I see some heads nodding and some finger pointing too, but we won't go there. Of course, I've yet to notice a single cork of Christina's, if she even has one. That's the right husband answer, right, Pastor Mike? Today we hear from the Gospel of Luke, the story of Martha and Mary. As far as our Gospel stories go, certainly one of our most well-known. I would argue one of our most important as well. Luke writes that as Jesus enters a certain village, he is met by a woman named Martha who welcomes him into her home. While Luke saves us the details around Martha's labors, based upon what we know of the traditions of the time period around hospitality and the roles of women in the home, as the host, Martha would have been expected to provide food, shelter, any basic amenities, as well as protection to her guests. And so as Martha frantically does all that she can to provide for Jesus' stay, Sister Mary enters the scene, sits at Jesus' feet, listening intently to everything he has to say. As most of us would, if we found ourselves in her position, Martha eventually reaches her breaking point with her sister's apparent laziness and goes to Jesus, hoping he will direct Mary to offer some help. Instead, Jesus sides with Mary. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. The truth is, something I think each of us here this morning would agree with, is that like Martha, we do at times find ourselves living in a world with far too many distractions and worries. When we can't even see or hear what's physically right in front of us, let alone God's presence. In a recent article published by Duke Divinity and distributed to us through our Synod's weekly e-news entitled, Capitalism is Killing the Small Church, Mennonite pastor Melissa Floor Bixler makes the argument that the church's struggle today is not where most place the blame on a lack of interest, but rather that people are exhausted, that they are exhausted in their home lives, but maybe most especially by the current nature of our economic workplace. But it isn't that people don't want or aren't interested in church or a deeper faith life, but that they are overcome with worry 
that they will never succeed in the workplace, thus in life, should they not overperform. That they are overwhelmed and distracted by the expectations placed on them by their employees, forfeiting vacation time, picking up secondary jobs just to make ends meet, and playing the role of what the author, Pastor Bixler, claims as work martyrs with the hope of a better future. But it isn't that people are too irreligious or too selfish, but rather too exhausted and too distracted. Supporting this notion, according to some recent research done by Johns Hopkins Hospital, one-third of Americans make the claim that they don't have enough time in their day to get things done, and that work hours regularly bleed into home life, something that psychiatrist and director of anxiety disorders clinic at John Hopkins explains is not only an annoying truth of modern life, but a significant health concern leading to a drastic increase across the United States in anxiety, in mental and physical fatigue, and in increased blood pressure and heart rate. The solution that John Hopkins gives, simple, maybe, do less, do less. Today's story of Martha and Mary leads us to reflect for ourselves on those worries and distractions in our lives that keep us from noticing Jesus' presence, from those quirks that we all have that distract us daily from the things in our lives that are truly important, to the many expectations, tasks, and work that, it, that can at times be overwhelming and leave us feeling exhausted and worse. While Jesus doesn't come to us in exactly the same way as he does to Martha and Mary in today's gospel, Jesus does come. He comes to us in the form of our children and our spouses, our family members and our friends, and two in those people with whom we least expect he comes to us in prayer and in worship as we sit amongst our family of faith. He comes to us in those times when we are most distracted, calling us to stop what we are doing and to sit and to listen. When we are so busy doing the many tasks of life that we fail to see the face of the one who so loved that he gave his life, who sent his spirit, that even today, some 2,000 years following his death, we too would hear his plea to Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. What is it that is distracting you from experiencing the calming presence of Christ, from taking the time to sit and to listen to his life-giving word, from inviting Jesus to be a permanent guest, not only in your home and in worship, but in your hearts, in your lives. In the chaos of your lives, when you are overcome with worry, distracted and exhausted, when your work is too much for you to bear and the things outside of work appear to be collapsing completely, may the voice of Christ calm your hearts and your minds. May it lead you to do all that you do, your daily tasks and your quirks alike, in his name, 
And when you find yourselves frantically doing all that you can do to achieve the many glories of this life, remember that it is through Christ alone that glory and life itself has already been achieved. For this, we give thanks and praise. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Today he rose again. He ascended his head. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with God's people around the world. Let us offer our prayers for those in need. For the church, visible and invisible, for all servants of the gospel, especially our staff, pastors Mike and Andrew, 
Tim and Barbara, Tom and Kim, Katie, Debbie, and Lisa, and for the holy people of God, that we hear your word and share your supper. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For favorable weather, for calm waters and seas, and for all creation, that it become for us a reflection of God's glory. For those affected by natural disasters, that they be provided relief. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For those who help make our communities safe, police officers and firefighters, military and international peacekeepers, local and national leaders, that God's peace and compassion come also to us. God of mercy, for the sick, the hungry, the imprisoned, those living with HIV AIDS, those awaiting the birth of children, and all people in need, especially Miriam, Joseph, Shane, Kay, Terry, Jennifer, Sam, Bob, Becky, Donna, Richard, Margaret, Nikki, Lowell, Aaron, Annetta, Joe, Jennifer, Tommy, Tina, Karen, Brandy, Logan, Addison, Dr. B.C. Paul and family of the Emmaus Ministry, that Christ, our great physician, care for all who are in distress. God of mercy. For those who are distracted by overwork and those who seek more adequate employment, that we recognize God's goodness in vocations of all kinds. God of mercy. In thanksgiving for the leadership and talents of Jess Smith and for, for her dedication to our youth over the past three years, we rejoice in the blessings we have received from you through her. Be with her now as she moves on to Indiana to new adventures in ministry with her husband. God of mercy. In thanksgiving for those who have died and are now at peace and for their lives that bear witness to the hope promised in the resurrection, we pray especially for the family and friends of Donna Aha and Mary Kay Finkboner, who recently died. God of mercy. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the green earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our Maker, Redeemer, and Healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death. We await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and upon this meal as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God invites you to this table of bounty. Come, the banquet is ready. Thanks be to God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, 
serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessings of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks.